Hi, I'm Eric, and this is episode 5 of Survival Medicine. And today, I'm going to talk about uh, disinfecting water and making it potable, uh, or fit for consumption. Now, the first step is to take out large particulates, uh, like if you get a, uh, some water that's got mud or twigs or uh, mosquito larvae, or dead bugs, uh, you want to get those out. You can either use a bandana or a piece of cloth or a coffee filter uh, to knock out these uh, large uh, particles. Now one surefire way of making the water safe to drink is boiling it. Now if you look at the textbook or, or what the CDC puts out or um, sort of the conventional thinking is that you bring water to a boil for at least a minute or three minutes if you're at an altitude of 2,000 meters or higher. Now, again, that's the textbook. If you look at what temperature most of these organisms uh, are killed at, um, typically it's between 140 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So getting water to a boil well exceeds the lethal temperature for most organisms. So just simply bringing water to a boil should get it hot enough to kill um, everything that's going to cause you some, some degree of illness with an exception. The exception is botulism. Botulism must be pressure cooked uh, to kill the organism and the spores. And obviously we're not going to be doing pressure cooking um, in a survival or backcountry situation. Now, since I don't like to carry a thermometer around if I'm going hiking or uh, doing some uh, uh, medicine in the third world, uh, boiling is a visual cue for me to know that I've got the temperature of the water to a safe level. So I will put the water on, get it to a boil, and at that point I'm comfortable with the water being disinfected. Now if you can't uh, start a fire for a variety of reasons, there's other ways of uh, making the water safe to drink. Uh, chlorine is a, a method that's tried and true. It's been around for a long time. Um, chlorine will disinfect most things. Uh, it's very easy to find and easy to use, um, but it's not always reliable at killing Giardia, and Giardia is one of the more common organisms to cause diarrhea. Now how to use chlorine? It depends on the concentration. You have to look on the bottle and see what uh, what type of chlorine you're using, whether it's 1% or 10%, and then you can either put it in drops per gallon or drops per liter. Uh, and here's a, a chart that will show you how many drops per liter or drops per gallon that's used based off of the percent chlorine solution. Uh, and of note, one drop is 0.05 milliliters. Uh, so 20 drops makes up one milliliter. Uh, so trying to measure this can be a little tricky if you're using small volumes of water that you're trying to disinfect. Now if you're using, um, if you want to look at it in terms of milliliters per gallon or milliliters per, uh, per liter, uh, Here's the chart reformatted in that uh, way. Uh, so, for example, using a 1% chlorine solution in a gallon of water, you'd use 2 milliliters. Iodine is another chemical agent that you can use to uh, uh, purify water or, or disinfect the water. Uh, and again, iodine comes in a variety of different concentrations. Uh, the betadine, or the uh, provodone iodine is one that I have uh, readily available. Um, it's something that we use in healthcare. Uh, I have it in the emergency department everywhere I turn around. And I usually will put this into a plastic tube and take it with me in my first aid kit. Uh, it has a variety of uses uh, for cleaning skin uh, and helping sanitize uh, uh, some instruments. And so having this readily available is one thing that. Um, I was excited to learn about using and sterilizing water, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, this information on iodine comes from uh, the High Altitude Medicine site on the web, and I would highly recommend that you take a look at it. They've got a lot of great information there. So if you've got uh, water that's clear um, and you're at 5 degrees centigrade, you need to let the iodine work for 30 minutes before the water is safe. If, uh, the water is cloudy, you need to double that. And if you're in a warmer temperature, say 15 degrees centigrade, uh, you don't have to wait as long. I think the safe thing uh, for you to think about is clear water, half an hour, dirty water, a full hour. Uh, and don't worry about the fifth, 5 or 15 degrees centigrade, because uh, it's going to, again, it's going to be hard for you to uh, perhaps measure that where you are. Now, iodine is relatively ineffective in killing cryptosporidium, uh, which is uh, in certain parts of the world, a very common cause of some chronic diarrhea. In most cases, the cryptosporidium, however, will uh, resolve on their own without any specific treatment uh, within um, 
several days to a, a week or two. The one caveat is if you're immunosuppressed because you're on treatment for cancer or if you have HIV, then uh, this cryptosporidium can cause some significant long-term uh, consequences. Uh, here's a bottle of the betadine. Again, one 30 mil bottle of betadine can disinfect 150 liters of water. That is a lot of water that you can make uh, ready to drink. And again, this is something that I have in my first aid kit already uh, when I'm going out. There's a variety of different types of purification tablets. Uh, here's an example of uh, the micropore. Uh, and a lot of these use chlorine dioxide. Now this is not the same thing as chlorine, although it's got the chlorine name in it. Um, and chlorine dioxide will work on uh, just about all the major uh, pathogens that will cause you a diarrheal illness from uh, drinking. Now, in terms of chlorine, the iodine, and uh, the chlorine dioxide, these are all first order kinetics. The, the important thing about that is the ability to clean the water is based on the concentration of the chemical you're putting in and time. You must give it the right amount of time to make the water safe to drink. Don't cut corners here. Now, you can double the concentration and cut the time in half, but you don't want to double the concentration on some of these. It can lead to some bad taste. Uh, and if you make it too concentrated with certain chemicals, it can actually make you ill. Uh, so I wouldn't go more than perhaps doubling the concentration to speed it up. Uh, but again, if you double the concentration, you cut the time that it takes to make the water safe in half. Now conversely, if the taste of the chlorine or the iodine or the chlorine dioxide is, is uh, unpalatable to you, you can cut the concentration in half, but you then have to double the time that you wait in order for the water to be safe to drink. Now there's also filters. Here's an example of a Berkey filter or the uh, Katadyne uh, pump. Uh, there's lots of different ones that are made. There's the str you know the straws or the uh, bottles that you filters you drink out of them. Uh, these are all uh, fairly good products. Uh, I use them frequently, but these will typically go down to 0.2 to 0.3 microns. And there's several different things that can make you ill that are smaller than that. One is the leptospira, which is a spirochete that can cause leptospirosis. Uh, and a lot of the viruses are smaller than uh, what the filter can filter out. Uh, so depending on where you are or the risk that you want to take, uh, the filters are not 100% on uh, diseases that can cause diarrheal illness. Now, in the very famous Wilderness Medicine textbook, um, they recommend that if you're in areas of heavy fecal or sewage contamination, you should not rely solely on a filter and you should add other means of disinfection. There is a new product called the Lifesaver Bottle. Uh, this was put together by a gentleman after the uh, tsunami that hit uh, the Pacific Rim. And, and he came up with this that uses a charcoal filter and a pump um, to take out the, uh, the larger organisms as well as the small viruses. Uh, so he, on this site it claims that it will go down to 15 microns so this would remove leptospira, the viruses, the big protozoa like Giardia and Cryptosporidium as well as all the bacteria like E. coli and Salmonella. So if this data is correct, then this bottle uh, would do everything you would need it to do to make the water safe. Uh, this bottle is relatively expensive. Uh, I believe it's around $120 for the single bottle and it's good for uh, quite a few uh, liters before you'd have to change the filter. You know, I think it's uh, well over 100 liters that it can uh, make clean. Now this is really cool. Uh, since I've spent time in Africa, um, clean water for, uh, is, is very important. And this is a simple solution that uses uh, uh, things that we can get in the third world uh, to make the water safe to drink. And this simply uses UV radiation from the sun to make the water safe to drink. All you do is you take a clear plastic bottle, uh, you fill it um, about three quarters of the way with water, you put the lid on, you shake it to uh, uh, sort of oxygenate uh, the water, then you fill the rest of it up to the, the top and uh, reapply the lid, and then set it on a corrugated roof and allow the sun uh, basically to expose it to both uh, heat and UV radiation. Now on very sunny days, you only have to wait six hours. If it's cloudy, 
uh, then you need to wait two days. But again, this is something very, very simple. Just fill the bottles, uh, allow the UV radiation to ac uh, activate oxygen-free radicals, uh, and it will kill the viruses, the protozoa, and the, and the bacteria. So this is a great, great program um, for anybody that's going uh, into some remote areas of the world and you want to work on water safety with some native population. Um, these plastic bottles exist everywhere in the world, and, and this is a fantastic uh, system. Uh, I, the website is down at the bottom of this slide. Uh, this um, was put together from some people in Switzerland. And again, take the time to look at it. Exquisitely simple. Um, but elegant in its ability to make the water safe. So in conclusion, water is very key. Uh, you have to have water to survive. Uh, you need it for cooking, for drinking. Um, from a medical application for cleaning wounds, it needs to be clean. Don't take shortcuts. Do what you need to do to make the water safe. Uh, have redundant systems. If you're using a filter, you may want to also add um, a chemical agent, such as chlorine dioxide. Uh, and again, for Areas that are highly contaminated with uh, sewage, uh, you can use filtration, but you need to add a second method, whether it's chlorine or iodine. And, and again, heat is sort of uh, the basic cure-all. Uh, if you get the water hot enough to a boil, you should kill any pathogens uh, that could make you ill, uh, with the exception of the botulism spores, uh, which, again, you're going to need a pressure cooker or something more significant for that. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you everybody for their comments. Uh, I've had some great emails and I appreciate the feedback. Uh, please keep it coming and uh, uh, we'll change gears on uh, the next couple slides and sort of move to uh, dental emergencies. Thanks.